Ave Maria. At that time, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, all the city was thrown in com- into commotion, saying, Who is this? But the crowds kept on saying, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. And Jesus entered the temple of God and cast out all those who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold the doves. And he said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But the chief priests and the scribes, seeing the wonderful deeds that he did, and the children crying out in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, were indignant, and said to him, Do you not hear what these are saying? And Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read out of the mouth of infants and sucklings? You shall have perfected praise. And leaving them, he went out of the city to Bethany, and he stayed there. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Peter Damien, born at the end of the 10th century, sometime between um, 990 and the year 1000. His parents died whilst he was still young, he being the youngest of quite a large family. He was entrusted to the care of his brother, who treated him badly, but was rescued by another brother who sent him to study, recognizing his innate intelligence. And he studied the secular subjects, but then realizing that he couldn't limp one foot and then another, he decided to serve God completely. And so he became a hermit. It was in his hermitage that he was discovered, and he became eventually not only the head of his um, priory, and that under obedience, but also he was chosen by uh, Pope Stephen to be a legate, and that is someone who would represent the Pope on important embassies. He it was not to his liking, but he did it under obedience. It wasn't long before he was elevated again under obedience to Cardinal Archbishop of Ostia, a post that he begged to be released from, from several popes. In fact, he served seven popes in succession, undertaking many important embassies for the popes to the various courts. His manner of life was exceedingly austere, and he is perhaps a saint that we could well do with in our own times, for the age in which he lived is not much different from that which we're going through today, because there were several serious abuses affecting the church. First, there was the problem with simony, where... um, where the the um, estates of the church were sold for money, and even the the sacraments were sold for money. Secondly, there was the problem, a very serious problem, of um, of the of unchastity, not only among the people, but particularly serious among the clergy. And in fact, the the the, the church was overwhelmed, not only. <coughs> not only with concubinage, but also with sodomy, against which he wrote a very important book, a landmark book called the Book of Gomorrah. He encouraged the, the popes of his time, and particularly Gregory um, the, 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 the Seventh, in the reform of the church. In fact, it's under his inspiration that we have the great reform of the church, the Hildebrand reform, which would root out all of those problems. He was not... Um, he thought nothing of castigating bishops who failed in their duty, as, for instance, the Bishop of Florence, who played the game of chess, for which he received a severe rebuke from St. Peter. And the bishop himself reformed his life as a result, showing 
that often uh, sins are committed out of ignorance or carelessness rather than from malice. And this is why the lives, the, the saints are so important because they're able to draw us back to what we ought to be doing. His, he had a confrontation even with the emperor, Henry the, the Fourth, who wanted to divorce his wife. And he, St. Peter, as, as a legate of the Pope, refused to permit it, warning the emperor that if he should um, uh, proceed with this divorce, not only would he be violating the law of God, but more seriously, he would be setting a bad example for the whole, whole of Christendom, for which he himself, um, the emperor, would be responsible and have to answer to God's judgment. The emperor withdrew from his proposal, but he treated his wife with even more cruelty than he had headed to. And so St. Peter, um, he, after this um, embassy, returned and, and was um, struck with a fever from which he died. He is a doctor of the church, and it is indeed to him the church should turn at this particular time when, again, she, the, the evils of a thousand years ago, a million, uh, millennia ago, a millennium ago, um, are afflicting us once more, not only in the area of celibacy, but also in the corruption, um, the financial corruption that overwhelms the church, and even more, the, the heresies that are being preached, even from the highest places. And so, we look at the gospel, which, which is that of, the, of our Lord's entry into Jerusalem and the cleansing of the temple. There are two cleansings of the temple. The first at the beginning of our Lord's ministry, <clears throat> and it's, this is recorded by St. John. And it is there that our Lord said to the Pharisees who challenged him, <clears throat> destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up, referring to his body. And so three years later, now he returns to the temple. He, return, he comes to Jerusalem. It is the beginning of Holy Week because he arrives on the Sunday, Palm Sunday, and by the Friday, he would be crucified. So he comes, he enters into Jerusalem, and the great crowd follow him. They lay down their palms and they welcome him into the city. And we're told by St. Matthew, at that time, Jesus entered Jerusalem and all the city was thrown into commotion, saying, Who is this? And the crowds kept on repeating, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. And there is a similar text um, to, to be found in the... Um, book of the Song of Songs, who is this that comes from Edom, dressed in the garments of Bozra? Or who is this that comes as morning rising? Who is this that comes as, and, and so on? And the answer is the Lord God Almighty. So in, this sec in the second case, the angels are echoing what in fact the people of Jerusalem were saying. This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And our Lord, immediately, having entered Jerusalem, he makes his way first to the temple. And again, we remember that what we don't listen only to the words of our Lord's mouth. We also read and understand him from his actions. So what he does is of significance and importance to us. And we also should follow in his actions. And so he goes first and foremost to the temple teaching us that our actions should always be focused on God. And also, the corruptions that the nation experience, the corruption of the people, often begin with the corruption of the priests. As the priests, so the people. If the priests are virtuous, the people also will be virtuous. If the priests are corrupt, then we can't expect any better from the, from the people. As our Lord says, uh, you are the salt of the earth. 
But if salt becomes tasteless, what can make it salty again? It is good for nothing. And so he goes to the temple to correct the evil that is flowing from there into the community. And what is the evil that we find? We're told Jesus entered the temple and cast out all those who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold the doves. So, the, what was avarice was the problem that was afflicting the, 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 the um, priests in the temple, buying and selling. And St. Paul warns us against, again of the same thing. He says that those who buy live as if they have nothing at all. They own nothing at all. St. Paul warns us again, saying that the love of money is the root of all evil. Our Lord himself tells us the same thing. He tells us that we should set our hearts on heaven and not on the things of the earth. And so there in the temple he finds those who are buying and selling. And what does he do? He overturned the tables of the money changers. Well, the money changers were... Um, the, those, those Jews who wanted to make profit from the uh, people. And the, by change of money was one of the cunning ways in which they could do so. Every, the, the law commanded the Israelites to appear before the Lord at least once a year. And they were not to come empty-handed. They were to bring sacrifices to the temple. For those who live close to the Jerusalem, because that was the only place that sacrifices could be offered, for those who live close to Jerusalem, it wasn't a problem because they would have their own animals which they could bring. But for those who live further away, it was not easy, it was not possible in many cases for them to bring the animals at a great distance. And so they would come with what they had, either money or they would come with um, gifts, um, such as um, uh, food, raisins, or corn, or whatever um, fruits of the earth they had. And this they would exchange in the temple precincts for the animals to be offered, whether sheep or goat, or a bull, or a dove, a pigeon, whatever. And so this conversion was the work of the money changers, for they would um, take the, the fruits and they would charge a profit, which of course was, in this way they pretended to avoid the, the, the um, condemnation of usury, and they would provide them with the animal for sacrifice. There were others who, for instance, the priests only permitted the shekel to be used in the temple. So those who came from foreign places, obviously having Gentile coins, they would exchange it for the shekel in the temple. And again, that was a source of corruption. And then we're told, and the seats of those who sold the pigeons, the doves. And so there are three categories of people that our Lord casts out of the temple. First, there were those who were buying and selling. Secondly, there were the money changers. And thirdly, there were those who sold the doves. Why does St. Matthew mention these three? Because he's trying to get us to understand this mystery that is involved. For those who were buying and selling were essentially those who were using the, the, the religion as a cloak for making profit. And this can apply to all of us. For religion is good, and indeed St. Paul says that religion is good and it is profitable, but only for those who are satisfied with what they have. And so there is this pretense to begin with. But then there was the more serious, the money changers. And who are these? Well, the, we now move into the, um, among the clergy, 
particularly the deacons. And these were given charge of the table and providing the food for the poor. And we are told that they were, ex and in, in fact, the, the deacons collected the money and this was distributed to those who were needy. We see this in the case, for instance, of St. Lawrence um, as one example. Equally, St. Stephen himself, they were ministering to the poor. But those were told that these money changers were, were corrupt. And so we see again that we have in the lower clergy, those who are corrupt, using the, the things of the church for their own profit, rather than to minister to the, for the purpose for which gifts are offered to the church. But more seriously, we're told, and St. Matthew is very specific, he overthrew the seats of those who sold the doves. Now, the seat represents those who teach, and therefore it's a, it's a symbol of the bishops, for they sit, their cathedral, this is where they teach. But what are they doing? They're not teaching, but they're selling the doves. The dove, of course, is a type, a symbol of the Holy Spirit. So they are selling the, the sacraments or conferring orders on men who are not worthy. And this certainly is the problem that we have faced for the last, visibly, for the last 40 or 50 years in the church, where those who are not worthy of the priesthood have been promoted, given the sacrament of orders. And then, amidst their corruption, they are promoted even higher, so they themselves become bishops. So here we see our Lord very clearly showing us that even in our time we have to beware of those who are not spiritual, but rather who use his church for personal gain, for worldly gain, and even for diabolical advantage. This is not much different from the time of, of, of St. Peter Damien. And so we learn this lesson that human nature does not change. But each, in each year, in each successive generation, it has to be renewed. And for that reason, we beg the Lord constantly to send us saints who will enlighten us as to how we should serve him in this world. For as the priests are, so also are the people. And so the Lord, having done this, he condemns them with his words. It is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. You've made it into a den of thieves. And that condemnation surely can apply to us even today. And what happens after this? Again, we listen to what St. Matthew writes. And again, we interpret it according to our needs. For we're told, and the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Well, there were many other people who had infirmities. What about those who were crippled, or the deaf, or the demoniacs? St. Matthew doesn't mention these, but just these two, the blind and the lame. And in the context, we can see again how it applies. For the blind are those who have no knowledge, for the blind cannot see. And so they stumble, wanting to do the good, but not being able to see the good. And so the um, St. Matthew is telling us that the, the clergy, the priests of the time, had failed to instruct the people. For where there is lack of knowledge, the people perish. And the lame, those who do know what to do, they can see, but they are disabled, they are crippled, they cannot walk along the right way. There is no one to correct them. And so we see the two things, the intellect and the will, are being healed by our Lord, and it's being done in the temple. The temple is his body, the church, and it is in the church that our intellect is instructed in the way of God, and by the means of the sacraments, we are strengthened to walk in the right way, in the way of righteousness. And so the Lord, in healing these two categories of people, tells us that we should find this enlightenment and strength to do that which is right in his church. And again, we pray to the Lord to send us saints such as St. Peter Damien, that they will lead us in this way. And the authorities, they come, they are angry. And we told the chief priests and the scribes, seeing the wonderful deeds that he did. So they saw what he did. What did he do? Well, he overturned the tables of the money changers. 
he cast out those who were selling, and no one raised a hand to prevent him. Well, this is a great miracle, surely, that one man with a cord, a, a, a whip made of cord, could drive out merchants, and no one resists him. Surely, this is a miracle that is stupendous, yet it is hidden. And the chief priests see this. And what do they do? They criticize. But even more, they see also that the children are praising the Lord. And they complain because the children are saying, Hosanna to the son of David. And they are indignant and say to him, Do you not hear what they are saying? They're praising God in man, and the man who is God accepts it. Yet our Lord will not do so openly, for there again there is a trap. For if he should silence the children, it would appear that the priests were right. Yet if he supports the children, they could accuse him of blasphemy. So he does what he always does. He resorts to the scriptures. Yes, <laughs> have you never read? Out of the mouth of infants and sucklings, you have perfected praise. So even the children, another miracle, who, who are barely conscious, are able to recognize in Christ Jesus, God made man. And they give perfect praise to him. But Lord, we're told, finding no um, understanding among the authorities, but rather increase hatred, departs, he leaves them to their own. Let us ask him that he do not abandon his church, but rather to hear the voice of the little ones, those who do not understand, and those who want to do that which is good, to remain, to stay with us, and to lead us along the path of righteousness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Santa Maria, Mater Dei.